Who we got here? Yinjevi, good evening. Adjust. Very fruity. Dark bird's eyes. Smells nothing like it smokes. I'm starting to realize that. Let me go uh, go looking for some other tobaccos here. Let me see. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We might have uh, some things in the back here. I think this might be a, a Fillmore evening. <sighs> Little inspection on Fillmore. That's what I love about the detachable camera. Had two amazing bowls of uh, calf stand earlier. It's fantastic. Fantastic. My only regret is that I did not buy 20 pounds of that like five years ago. <laughs> it's, it, was, it would have been impossible to go wrong if I would have overbought that. Out of all the things I overbought, I never overbought anything really good. It's actually kind of it's kind of amazing to think about. Full Virginia Flake. I would love to have like ten tins, ten 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 tins of uh, Full Virginia Flake. Bought about them like five years ago. Although it wouldn't really matter. It'd be great even if it was fresh. You don't really need to age that stuff. Some Robert McConnell blends too. Uh, Robert McConnell's uh, Oriental in a red tin, from what I recall. That would have been great to have a huge backstash from many, many years ago. Aged to perfection. I have not heard much about that blend. I've not seen any reviews on Robert McConnell's uh, Oriental. One of my very first Oriental blends that I bought. I always felt uh, the name Robert McConnell seemed like he was a member of Genesis for some reason. <laughs> Not sure why. I've not busted out the church warden in quite a while. But tonight was uh, a good night as any. Not a pipe I smoke often, but this is the... Um, it actually does say Italy on it right here, but it is the, uh, hold on a second. It's not going to pick it up. Rigoletto. Yeah. 
four two. I overbought when I bought one ten the Vaughn. <laughs> the Vaughn sounds like a, a <laughs> the Vaughn sounds like the name of a of a low grade uh, electronics manufacturer. Like you didn't buy the Sony TV, you bought the Vaughn TV. Like when I was a kid, when I was like thirteen. I asked my parents to to buy me a Sanyo uh, boombox, and they came back with a Gold Star boombox, and they said it was just as good. Although I know it wasn't. Life well, welcome. Prepping the uh, prepping the bowl here. Oh, last night's foyer, foyer, foray, foyer into uh, three peas is still settling with me. I do like to smell this stuff though. It does smell really good. I hate to admit it, I like looking at it more than I actually like smoking it. <laughs> it's a it's kind of like a car that looks better to look at than it does to drive. Uh, that's how I feel about Peterson's 3P as of today. My mind uh, could change over time. But I know this doesn't count for anything, but I do like the 10 art. Let me get the uh, glare out of the way here. Why can't it? It doesn't seem as green. There we go. I like the tin art. I like the color. My only reservation about this blend is the word perfect. I'm not sure it's a perfect plug. Maybe above average. It should be called uh, Peterson's above average plug. Gold Star then LG now exactly 42. So someone else recognizes the name Gold Star. If you had a, a boom box or a TV purchased between the years of 1988 and 1994, you will remember the name Gold Star. If you shopped at Sears, H.H. H. Gregg, Circuit City back in the day. This is before Best Buy. I'm trying to think where we used to buy electronics from. Service merchandise. I guess they did have Walmart back then. The apostrophe is a bit. Yes! Finally! Finally, someone spoke up. The apostrophe is unneeded. Peterson three Ps? That's an unneeded apostrophe. Finally. So I'm not alone here. 4-2 is also a, a, a grammar cop, for lack of a better word. It's a, it's a little, I'll be honest, it's a little pretentious. Now that I have a good reflection on the camera, the apostrophe is a little pretentious. I'm not, I know we're picking on three Ps here. I also don't like the, uh, the cursive font on the P. It's a little try-hard, to be honest. And now that I think about it, now that we're ganging up on it, I'm not a big fan of the font of the three either. A little too uh, artisanal. It's a little try hard. Uh, it's a little try hard. And maybe that's why subconsciously, let's, let's compare this to an art with a classic, low effort, non try hard, business oriented capstan. This is almost like Comic Sans in comparison. Look at that. It's not even close. Like This guy shows up at the office with a suit and tie on. <laughs> this is the guy who shows up at the office and he forgets to button the collar. That, that's how I feel about Peterson's 3P. Tin art, at least. Not talking about the tobacco, just the marketing department. I'm glad we got that off my chest 
Well, let's continue the conversation. I'm going to reach over here. Peterson don't, Peterson's no, they know how to do this. Let me get the serious business on the left, comic sans on the right. Much better, much worse. I'm going to give this one like a B plus. Cornell and Deal, not known for their uh, <laughs> amazing marketing. Let me get this right in the in the light here. Hold on. Not amazing marketing, but classic. A little busy. This one's a little busy. There's a lot going on there. And I think that's all the uh, the tins I have to pick on. I'm going to say it. Three peas, no apostrophe. Tastes like a heavy golden Olex slice to me. A heavy golden Olex slice. I got to disagree with you on that, man. That there's... <laughs> There's nothing even close to uh, to Orlix in three P's to me. I mean that's that's a that's a Hail Mary comparison, Stratman. One is super bright and one is like super dark. I'm not sure what the uh, what the connection is there. Wife well, smoking Pe uh, Peterson Flake. Well, I, thought I could be missing something. I, I don't think Peterson's makes a flake. Is there is there a blend called Peterson Flake? If so, I am way behind the times. Peterson Flake? I think there's an adjective missing in that description. Paul, welcome. Uh, Yunjit, I almost always agree with you on aesthetics david you have great taste. well thank you I, I work hard for my aesthetic taste at least the topping or whatever it is okay 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 hold on they're still calling it dunhill flake they're not calling it P i mean I, I don't have a tin here so i can't tell you but i'm assuming they're called I'm assuming they call it Peterson's Dunhill Flake. Is it just called Peterson Flake? I bought it, and I didn't even um, like I knew what it was because I know the the square tin art. I did not know that uh, they they threw the Dunhill name off of it. I'll be damned, Jebby. I'll be damned. I I bought it. I smoked it. I think it's. In my opinion, it's 99% of whatever Dunhill Flake was. Um, I was perfectly happy to get it, perfectly happy to smoke it. Very thankful that uh, they even tried to bring it back. I don't care what they call it. They could call it... Uh... <laughs> Let me think of something I hate. <laughs> give, me, give me a second. What's that blend you guys keep asking about that I hate? Tin of yellow tin. Um, damn it. I tend to forget about things I hate. Um, ah, it's that one that I banned. Aaron Moore. Yes, they can call it it. They can call it Peterson's Aaron Moore Flake, and I would still buy it. <laughs> That's how good it was. I know it's a match, but... It's it's a damn fine match, in my opinion. Thank you for not finishing the, the full word. <laughs> Still winning by STG, but they have changed the name. <laughs> that much changed the art. Uh, the blend type is straight Virginia. Just do not care about this. I am. Uh, I'm looking around here. I'd like to. I'd like to smoke something. I'd like to smoke something. 
unusual, even though I've already pegged this button. I'm trying to think what I have in the house here. Oh well, we'll do uh, we'll do Fillmore. Once I get the courage to go brave the cold. What's everybody uh, smoke today? Best bowl of the day. I will say I'm. Um, I will render a final, final, final opinion about night train god there's a lot there's a lot left in here man there's two bricks left in the sucker i'm glad i tried it i think you can mix it i think it's a fine occasional smoke it's tough to love that's all i'll say i'll always finish a bowl of it but it's a little too uh, it's a little too kitchen sinky, as I've said before. I think though, I, you know, depending on the time of the day, depending on what you've had to eat, what you had to drink, I think I think you could have an occasional bowl and be like, "This is really good." It's just that it's so busy that if you have more than one bowl per day, it, it's like um, it, it feels a little scatterbrained. But uh, as an occasional smoke. Perfectly fine. The one thing I'll say about Night Train, it's not boring. There's a lot going on. I would just say that eh, there's maybe a little too much going on. So for those of you who are kind of bored of your uh, mono flavor, one note type of blends, in a two ounce tin, no way to go wrong. Eight ounce tin, maybe I, maybe I overbought a little bit. But uh, but nothing bad. Black double X. Sam will go with C H C H flake. C H. This is like a trivia question. C H. Can't place it. Uh, smoking Gauth and Hogarth brown flake aromatic. Was finally able to get some to try it. Uh, thoughts so far, in Jimmy? That's got to be crazy Lakeland, I'm assuming. Paul the Piper going out all today with that one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're answering what you're smoking. So Paul is smoking Black Double X, which I believe is a rope. I've got a sample of that many, many years ago. I know I smoked it once. I felt like it was 1792-ish territory, although I'm not an expert. I just knew it was um, it smoked like the Grim Reaper. That's all I could say. Try chewing that stuff because double X is almost unsmokable. <laughs> well, Jebby speaks the truth. Just about to try Bill Bailey's bowling blend. Lifefall, you're really way out there on the fringe of the tobacco world. You're smoking the stuff way over here. You're not you're not in the main line. You're not shopping at Walmart. You're shopping at that uh, mom and pop shop way off the highway, way off the beaten path. So, so far off the beaten path. I've never even heard of that before. Uh, Chip, welcome. Wait to the party. It, well, it is a party. I can play some music that YouTube won't catch. So I'm playing a YouTube channel that it itself is uh, playing obscure foreign LPs that the, the guy bought off eBay. So hopefully the algorithm won't catch it. Although there is commercial breaks. Um, uh, Mr. Japan is smoking. Hashtag now smoking. Hold on a second. McBaron HH Burley Flake. Can't go wrong with that. Otherwise, you need like a English equivalent name. I can't think of a, a way to shorten <laughs> that name. We'll just call you Japan. I think those are Japanese characters. Jebby, brown flake is really good, mostly Virginia and some burly. And the arrow version. What do you mean arrow version? What do you mean arrow? Brown flake is an arrow 
in the sense that it's so heavily topped. I, I think, Yinjevi, you're, you're, you're leaving out some details for the audience here. You buy a tin of brown flake. Does it say brown flake barrel version? It's got to have some descriptor on it. Pleasant version of the Lake Consent. It tastes like a classic old school tobacco. You guys and your you guys and your your descriptors. Old school tobacco. Most of you are under thirty five. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by. You're not old enough to know what old school tobacco tastes like. Nor, nor am I, by the way. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just, uh, I laugh at comments like that. It tastes like my my forefathers used to smoke back in uh, back in WW two. <laughs> you know that'd be interesting. Uh, Fifty years from now, when we're all gone, it'd be the first time pipe smokers will be able to. Uh, compare taste notes on camera in, in captured video 50 years prior. It'd be interesting to see guys back in the 1940s, 1950s, if, if there was such a documentary made, which of course there's not. But um, there's a bunch of guys in a room with like a film camera talking about tasting notes of the tobacco that was available back then smoked in pipes that were also made back then that would be that would be interesting the words they use the adjectives they use the comparisons they use i've always wondered that even then they'd probably say this tastes like old school tobacco but then they'd be talking about like the 1800s interesting Got off on a tangent there. I apologize. <laughs> All right. I think it's time to put on six different layers and uh, and head out for my... Uh, what's that elf movie? Oh, my Lord of the Rings. Uh, Gandalf pipe. Right. Let me take a bio break. We'll throw on a couple parkas and get to it. Now we're ready. 